Steve will play it. Because she's a crazy Steve. Her gamer, gamer. Hopefully this song gets shorter for you guys. Because she thinks the last one was too long. But she still is a crazy cat lady. You gamer. Hopefully this is the last one because like before, I don't like singing these songs. Crazy Cat Lady Gamer Reviewer or Martha Butler does not own the any trailers or pictures. I use them under fair use for educational and entertainment purposes. Martha here. So today we're just doing um doing um Star Wars Phantom Menace. I have enough pictures probably to show you guys. So not enough, so I'm not gonna do a face. I probably see not gonna see my face in this video, but anyway. Besides, this movie's not worth seeing my f seeing my face. I mean, if you ask me, um, Attack of Clones is definitely worse, so that one's probably gonna not gonna show my face either. But at least this one has Liam Neeson in it, <laughs> and at least this one has um. Dark Maul in it. I mean, and this one also has um, the young version of um, One Kenobi. Um, so yeah, those. And we also have um, Tara Knightley. For people who don't know who Tara Knightley plays in this, she plays the Queen's decoy in this. So it's kind of hard to tell it's her because of all that makeup. But her and her and um. Natalie Portman are pretty close to the same age, so <laughs> you would not think that, but yeah, those two, and I guess they look pretty similar, too, so there's that, and yes, Jar Jar is the, like, the worst in this movie, because he doesn't have as many lines in, um, the and Clones, and I don't think he even speaks in, um, Revenge of the Sith, so there's that. And, yeah, basically that's it about that. So, um, so if you don't know the story about, um, the Phantom Ventus, it's, um, has to do with, um, the Viceroy wanted to take over Naboo to go get a treaty and stuff like that, and, um, Wing Kenobi and Qui-Gon Jinn have to stop them. Um, so they go down to try to, to the, negotiate, but the, the Viceroy won't have it. They send their, um, their droids, what, 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 um, they use before the, before the, for them, before the clones came along, before the stormtroopers came along. So, Apparently, they um, get onto one of Naboo, and for some reason, um, Qui Gon has to save um, Jar Jar and give us two whole hours of a headache. I mean, okay, I can get, I get it, because when I was a kid, I loved, I liked Jar Jar, but. Every single time I see him in this movie, like, why did you bring him along? Why did you bring him along? What useful does he have in this movie? Like, except for keeping, like, getting the getting the the dung at the end of this movie to distract the droids, because they lose that battle. If it wasn't for Anakin getting rid of the ship up there, which the ship, did, come on, that ship is worse than the Death Star. The Death Star was designed to get destroyed the first time and Lando killed the second one but the fact that one was killed by an eight-year-old an eight-year-old sheesh so that's only thing that Jar Jar does good and, it, and it's not even it's not even his fault that they won that battle so, 
and like one of the good things in this movie is um has is um dark maul because he is he because his second of um his two dual lightsabers those were pretty good and yeah he doesn't say much i mean who says more him or boba fett what's ask you that who says more death uh, um Dark Maul or Boba Fett? <laughs> Who has more lines? But yeah, so after they after he after um Qui Gon saves Jar Jar, he goes they take him down to the Gungan City and get him a ship to sneak into or pass around the the, um, the droids, and they get the princess out of there, the queen out of there, and that. They try to get out of the ship, but they can't because I guess their toy, their shields got taken down. So R2 and a couple other um, other R2 units tried to stop them, but they weren't able to. So only R2 was able to one to do it, and he gets clean for it. And they end up going to Tatooine because the ship was damaged to where they had to have get a new part for it. And this is where they bump into Anakin, and Anakin wins a pod race for them. Which, I don't know, it seems like to me the pod race gets longer every single time I watch it. I mean, I think this should have stepped one lap. And Qui-Gon frees Anakin. And... They go back to, they go and get, um... See if they can get the the government to help them, but doesn't really don't. So the um the guy who will become the emperor um I don't so he ends up help he ends up helping them. They think that they're helping him, but actually he's just trying to use them so he can come chancellor. That's all he really wants out of this is to come chancellor. And so we have, we have like three battles going on at this time. We have um, when well, Anakin ends up beating the ship, and we also have um, Obi Wan Kenobi and Qui Gon fighting De Dark Maul, which is the best battle out of the three of them. And we also have the Duggins versus the Droids. Don't even like they sh like the Duggins versus the Droids is stupid. I mean, you could have Anakin's ones like, "Yay, let the Earl win!" Yay. Um, but I just wish they would have stuck with the Dark Maul one, because the Dark Maul fight is great. <laughs> so, yeah. And, um, they win. Yay! So, what do I give this movie? Well, like I said, it is somewhat worth watching, so you can see um, Liam Neeson. <sighs> Dark Maul and young and young Obi Wan Kenobi. I can't remember his name right now because I'm really tired. But that's basically it. You can just ignore um um Jar Jar. It you're able to watch it, but I don't know. I give this movie because. Somewhat watchable, unlike um the next one. That one's just gonna be intolerable. But I give it a six out of ten. Solly, what do you give it? I give it.